From hotter summers to rising sea levels, cities across Massachusetts are just beginning to reckon with the effects of global warming. And while it's impossible to directly attribute this week's tornado and revere to climate change, it is an example of the more extreme weather events we can expect in coming years. Some of the proposals to address climate change are pretty dramatic and they're very costly. But in this focus follow-up, WGBH News reporter Stephanie Lydon looks at one possible remedy that's pretty easy to like plant more trees. The Commonwealth Avenue Mall is one of Boston's signature sites, a grand boulevard of majestic trees where residents and visitors converge. It's green spaces like this that contribute to Boston's rich urban canopy. But the tree's real contribution goes beyond what we can see. That vegetation is storing carbon. If that vegetation was removed, that carbon would be in the atmosphere. Lucy Hutira is a Boston University scientist who is studying how cities like Boston can reduce carbon dioxide levels, a major greenhouse gas. We're trying to come up with bottom-up budgets of where all the CO2 is coming from. So that we're coming up with estimates of CO2 emissions from cars, from buildings, from factories, as well as CO2 that's being taken up by plants. Hutira says a robust urban forest is critical in controlling CO2. Mature trees naturally absorb the gas, but they also help reduce emissions. The biggest contributions that the vegetation in the city has to our climate here is the cooling that the trees provide and the change in what the building energy demands are. And you put all of this together and it does have a real climate impact. As part of the city's broader plan to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, Mayor Menino launched an ambitious effort in 2007 to plant 100,000 new trees. Well, the goal of 100,000 trees was really a means to an end. Uh, we we're seeking to increase our canopy coverage from 29% to 35%. Brian Sweat is Boston's chief of environment, energy, and open space. In the last six years, we've planted uh, more than 20,000 new trees. We're interested in planting trees in our parks, uh, as well as along our streets uh, to provide um, shade uh, during periods of extreme heat and provide more comfort to the city. But planting trees is just the first step. Helping them thrive has proven to be more challenging. Max Ford Diamond is the city's arborist and sees firsthand how climate change is affecting urban trees. We're having a lot of problems with marginal leaf scorch, which is a problem when uh, there's not a lot of rain, water. Um, affecting our trees and the soil's not getting the moisture that it's needed. I would say we have seen a lot more dead trees, trees with no leaves at all, than we've seen in the previous years before. As Ford Diamond and his team prune a honey locust tree in need of a trim, Eileen Ettinger is studying the impact of climate change on trees at the Arnold Arboretum. Climate change is already having visible effects on tree populations um, all over New England. And one of the big things that we're seeing is new pests are coming in that we haven't seen in as great abundance before. Pests like woolly adelgid, which is killing native hemlock trees across Massachusetts. And if average temperatures continue to rise, Edinger says the city's tree canopy may one day be completely different. The species that can grow here um, is expected to change for sure as our climate changes. So that's something that I'm trying to look at here at the Arboretum where I can look at a whole bunch of different species all growing in the same place. Boston is expected to update its climate change action plan in December. City officials say planting a wider variety of trees and maintaining those we still have will be a major part of it. Back on Commonwealth Avenue, you'll find no complaints about that. For WGBH News, I'm Stephanie Leiden. So how do we protect and preserve our trees from the effects of climate change? Here to discuss this further is Michael Dosman, who is the curator at Arnold Arboretum in Jamaica Plain and Roslyn Dale. It's good to have you with us. Great to be here. So how does Boston compare to other metropolitan areas when it comes to the tree population, healthy tree population? Sure. Well, you know, the, uh, I'm not going to speak for the city of Boston per se, mm -hmm. but I think we're pretty representative of those, at least from the northeast, uh, you know, where we have a, a diversity of trees trees, a palette of trees, so to speak, uh, in our healthy urban forest. Uh, some of those are planted, some of those are part of remnant uh, urban wilds, and some of those are, are things that have, have, uh, have been part of parklands for maybe over a century. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's very, uh, that's characteristic of many of the, the cities in the Northeast. You were telling me before we got on the air that it's tough to be a tree. It is life on the street. <laughs> it is. Uh, you know, if you think about the 
I like to think of it as a spectrum mm -hmm. of environments in a city where you might have something like at the Arnold Arboretum where we have you know, 281 acres of kind of a pastoral parkland similar to Franklin Park or even getting over to the common. Uh, and then you have smaller areas, maybe boulevards like on Calm Ave where you have trees that have quite a lot of room for their roots to grow. And then it gets smaller and smaller so you might find those two foot by four foot tree pits, or some people might call them even tree coffins, uh, where it's challenging for a large, robust tree to really have sufficient amount of resources, root resources, to, to thrive and produce. Uh, so there's this whole continuum sure. of different sites. Uh, and so obviously as the resources dwindle, the root resources, root system resources um, dwindle, uh, it's harder for that tree. Sure, and then you compound that with this issue of climate, and exactly. it's amazing that we have any trees. Exactly, it's, it's difficult to begin with, and then mm -hmm. you toss into the mix, uh, you know, unpredictables, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's extreme events of heat followed by cold, uh, moisture, excess, and the deficit drought and so unless you're a tree that has a, a wide tolerance for a wide range of, of things uh, uh, affecting it, it can be challenging. So just how bad is it for the trees? I mean how many are we losing sure. to the climate every year? Uh, I don't know that exact number per se but uh, you know it's there's a, a rule of thumb many people will say that you know the average tree's lifespan on a street tree is about every seven years every, uh, a seven-year-old tree uh, tends to die um, and so that's uh, you know some trees might die their first year others might live to be 70 but they the average lifespan for a tree is about seven years. Wow, I had no idea of that. Right. I, I did not realize that. So how much are they really protecting us? I mean, do we really need trees? Oh, certainly, certainly. That, you know, that uh, uh, Lucy uh, Hutra had mentioned exactly, that the, the cooling effect, the, the lowering of the temperature, uh, there's a what's called an urban heat island. Mm -hmm. Basically, you have a lot of pavement, it absorbs a lot of radiation, and reflects back as heat. So if you can intercept that with a green canopy, uh, you can actually lower uh, the, the, the temperatures. And then as those trees exhale, so to speak, the water vapor, they can actually add moisture. There's a cooling effect from that. So it's significant. It's a very expensive idea though. 100,000 trees to be planted, sure. they're expensive. Oh, yes. Is there another way to combat the issues that the city is dealing with that wouldn't be quite as expensive or could possibly be healthier longer? I actually think that trees are probably the cheapest investment. Uh, if you think about from the not just the short term but for the long term, uh, it is true that 100,000 trees, especially if you're purchasing a, a, a large tree with a large root system and, uh, and and soil, they can be expensive to locate and to, to find sites for in the city. But long term, if you could actually get those trees to live decades. Uh, you know, the, the cost recovery is, is there, especially in the things that we don't think about. Um, stormwater mitigation is a huge expense for cities. Uh, you can think of the rain vent we had a couple days ago. Right. And, uh, uh, you know, the mm. trees have a magic way of actually taking up uh, that water uh, so it doesn't have to go down into storm sewers. So can we, Michael, get them to live longer than seven years on the street? I think so, but we've got to we've got to we've got to put our ingenuities together and collaborate uh, among a, no, a number of different stakeholders. Certainly, they're they're the botanists and horticulturists who are who are looking at ways that we can study and build, design uh, better trees or, or broaden that palette. You want trees that are able to tolerate a whole host of different issues. Uh, but then there's also the the infrastructural component. Can we create? cityscapes and our managed landscapes that can actually make it easier for a tree to survive. And that, that involves, you know, from the community regional planning, urban planning, uh, landscape architects, city engineers, to really think about this in an integrated way. And that third aspect is the community. Uh, and I think, you know, uh, it takes a village, so to speak. And if you have community members who are adopting their trees, are, are learning from their trees, are, are uh, advocating for them, that's a third point for a, heart, uh, for a healthy urban forest. I love trees. I, I'm just glad I'm not one. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Michael Dosman, thank you very much for sure, being with us. You.